Hello algebra students and welcome back to another video lesson as we continue to explore polynomials uh, where we are going to expand a little bit more on greatest common factors and using that to factor a polynomial or to break it down into smaller parts which is eventually what we need to do if we're going to solve. So today it's all about factoring and in order to help us I've got two introduction questions that are going to really kind of focus on what we're doing here, um, the process that's used for factoring. So the first one over here, we've got what we might call a GCF on the outside, 3x squared. And I'm trying to figure out what do I need to multiply uh, in this blank and this blank to obtain this answer. Which one of the four choices do you think it is? Well, if we're looking at it, this first term here is going to end up being multiplied 3x squared times something to get that result. So 3 times what is 15? That would be our 5. x squared times what is x to the fourth? That's an x squared. And notice we still have a y on here, but I don't have a y out there, which means it needs to be part of that term. 5x squared y would be the first blank. All right, then if we follow that process for this one, that second blank is going to give us this result. So what am I going to multiply 3x squared by to get 6x squared? Well, 3 times 2 is 6. x squared times 1 is x squared, so I don't really need any more x's. So the blanks here would be 5x squared y plus 2. So that, in a sense, that's what we're doing. We're working backwards to take a binomial and break it down using GCF. Now, what is happening in that process is that we're really dividing. Right? I am taking 8x to the 4th, y to the 3rd, and I'm dividing it by 4x squared y. Plus then I'm taking 12x squared y squared. and dividing it by 4x squared y. So some of the rules that we, we, we have for exponents is that when we're dividing them, they can cancel each other out. Same thing with our numbers. What's 8 divided by 4? Well, that's 2. x to the 4th divided by x squared. If I canceled them out, that would leave me with 2 on the top y to the third divided by y is y squared plus 12 divided by 4 is 3. x squared divided by x squared is 1. They cancel each other out. And y squared over y is y. Now, if you're curious how I, how I got these variables, uh, I'm going to just demonstrate with the x to the fourth over x squared. Right? This is x to the fourth on top by writing it out longhand, and this is x squared on the bottom. x over x, that's a 1. x over x, that's a 1. So 1 times 1 is 1, times x times x is how we end up with x squared. And that's the long way of looking at it. But it's these two processes that we use to help us factor. So I'm going to look at page 11 inside of the packet. If you have access to it, great. Uh, if not, I would write down at least this top box. So I would probably pause the video and write down at least this information here. So this box is a one by two, one row by two columns. So we've got a one by two, which means my answer is going to be a one by two. Now, what we are looking for, and this is kind of what we did with multiplication, uh, is we are looking for uh, what is the GCF of these two? The GCF of whatever those two are is going to get, we're going to write it right here in front of the box, that GCF. So what's the greatest common factor of 12 and 18? Well, that's 6. What's the greatest common factor of x squared and x? That's x, okay? That's what we worked on yesterday. So that's 6x. What I need to look for then is how do I divide, and those are going to go here and here. If I take the box and I divide it, I'm going to get an answer to put here. 
and same with this one. Or we can like pretend we're filling in the blank. 6x times this information up here has to give me 12x squared. 6 times what is 12? Well, that would be 2. x times what is x squared? That would be x. So 6x times 2x is 12x squared. Try that with this one. What do I need to multiply this by to get 18x? Well, that would be a 3. How many more x's? None, because they both have 1. They're both positive. That's a positive 3. So we're going to leave that as positive 3. This goes out in front of my parentheses. That's my 1 by 2. 2x plus 3. That is called factoring. We factored out the GCF and identified what was remaining from those two pieces. See if you can't try that with the third one. Pause the video and see if you can't factor out the GCF. So again, our GCF goes right out in front. Greatest common factor of 24. 15 and negative 27 is going to be 3. We have a 3. Y to the 4th, Y to the 3rd, Y to the 2nd. They all have Y to the 2nd in common. 2. Now let's work backwards, okay? How, 3 times what number is 24? That's going to give me 8. How many more Y's do I need? If I've got Y squared, but I need Y to the 4th, that means I still have y squared that I need. 3 times what is 15? Well, that's 5. y squared and y to the third. That means I need one more y. 3 times what is negative 27? Negative 9, right? I need to get a negative 27. y squared, to get to y squared, I don't need any more y's. So we're going to write that. The GCF goes out front, 3y squared, that's my one dimension, times 8y squared plus 5y minus 9. All right, and it's all of that factoring by knowing the GCF. Let's look at two more. I'm sorry, one more. Try and see if you can't factor that one using that same process. All right, step one is to try and identify the greatest common factor. I'm going to go out front. Greatest common factor of these numbers, 40, negative 5, and 35 is 5. How many A's do they all have in common? Just one, because the last one only has one. So we're going to take out 5A. We've got to figure out what's left. 5 times what is 40? That's my 8. A times how many more is A to the third? A squared. Now we go to the next one. 5 times what is negative 5? That's negative 1. A times what is A squared? That's one more A. 5A, so 5 times what is 35? That's 7. A times what is A? Nothing. I don't need any more. So the greatest common factor will go out front. And we're left with 8a squared minus 1a plus 7, because we have a positive 7 on the end. All right, so once you can kind of start to, to get used to the patterns and the process that happens here, I think it tends to get maybe just a little bit easier. But that's why the practice part of this is so critical, so important. All right, here's another example. We've got two terms, right? Now, they don't put them in a box for us, but that's okay. If you like the box, go ahead and make one. Take your two terms and put them in their own little box. And then you'll see that you can still do this. What's the greatest common factor of 21 and 7? Well, that's a 7. How many g's do they have in common? 2, so g squared would come out. And how many h's do they have in common? Well, just the one, because the first one only is one. So there's my GCF. Now I'm going to figure out what do we have left 
to pull out. How do I need to multiply? So 7 times what is 21? That's a 3. G squared times what is G squared? No more. Just a 1. I don't need any more. H times what is H? Nothing more. I don't need any more H's. So now we go to the next one. 7 times what is 7? That's a 1. G squared times what gives me G to the fifth? How many more G's do we need? 3. How many more H's do we need? H and H squared would give me H to the third. So 7G squared H times 3 plus G to the third H squared. Now I don't have to write the 1 if it's in front of this. I, I certainly can. I'll, I'll put it there like a dashed one. I, it, it's there. We just don't have to write that if there's variables. It might just be easier to always remember to write it. Last one. Try our last example. So again, if you're more comfortable with creating this box, I would encourage you to do so. quickly make that box. Now this one might be even easier because I noticed something in this one. If you look at these three boxes, hopefully you notice that the last one doesn't have any variables. So I can't take out part of my GCF can't be S or T because it can't come out of those last one. So what's the GCF of 32, 4, and 28? Well, that's 4 because 4 goes into all of them. Again, can't take out an S or a T because this last box doesn't have any. So now we got to multiply. 4 times what is 32? That's 8. If I don't have any variables, these all have to come out. S to the 4th, T to the 5th. 4 times what is 4? That's 1. The ST has to come out so that if I multiply this by 4, we get that. 4 times what is 28? That would be 7. 4 is the GCF, so it goes out front. 8, S to the 4th, T to the 5th, plus 1 ST, which looks like first place. 1 ST plus 7. So you can now see why finding the GCF was so important yesterday and how we're using this to help break down larger polynomials into smaller pieces. If you have any questions, please make sure that you reach out because we're going to continue to use this to help us solve as we go forward. Until next time, everyone, stay safe.